All right, everybody, welcome to see us online. Okay, so let's see how many people we got. We got nine viewers. Now I, I figure out how to do it on my phone so I can check it on my phone. So uh, let's jump right in actually. Sixteen. Oh, maybe that thing has a delay on it. Okay, so I know we'd say we just do peer review today, but I decided that we should do just a little bit of lecture time because I want to try to move things a little bit faster because that means you get more time for your homework assignments before the before the end of the semester, especially for the you only have two more homework assignments left and. I'd rather get them out there sooner than later, so you have more time to do them. I mean, otherwise you'll have the one week to do them, but I think it'd be nicer to have more than one week for the final project. So we'll do one algorithm today for like 20 minutes, and then we'll jump into review, okay? Um, so there will be assignments, two more assignments, minimum spanning trees and dexterous. And I'm really, trying to decide on how to handle that because the way that I thought about it was the next assignment, which would be 11, I, I just no assignment 13, I suppose. Yeah. So no unlucky 13, I suppose. So the way I thought about it was next assignment with minimum span entries is going to be themed to edge of tomorrow. And then the last assignment is themed to space. However, I could make them both themed to space and just basically together as a big project. So I could combine them. But I had to get rid of the edge of tomorrow theming, so I kind of hyped everybody for that. So I don't know. Well, I'll figure that out over the weekend. But okay, let's uh, let's go right into the algorithm that I want to talk about today. So we will eventually talk about topological breadth first search and depth first search. Uh, however, today I decided we to pick breadth first search to do. So. We'll go ahead and do that. But you'll see that depth first and breadth first are almost the same algorithm. You just use a stack instead of a queue. So I have an example here that I could go ahead and use. Um, I will take the graph from this just because I know this is a nice graph and I know what the solution is. So if I mess it up, then I have a sign that I messed it up, but S shouldn't. So let me go ahead and draw the graph real fast. And do get those homework questions, or sorry, not homework questions, test questions ready to go. What I will do for that is I will yet again talk a little bit about the topics of the test. I will open up the room for questions. And then at the end, what I'll do is I'll end the, uh, I think the curtain, that looks weird. I will end the, the stream a little bit early and or not the stream sorry I'll end the recording early and then I will talk about the test by going through each question and telling you the topic of it but that will be recorded on Twitch just not on the YouTube one because it's, it's just I don't need to have all that on, on YouTube uh, it might confuse people in future semesters because they might think that oh my test will have these exact combination of questions and that's not true so that thing keeps bending down it's like you can see that little edge there. That is bothering me. See if I can I can fix that. Okay, there we go. All right. So, sorry, technical issues today with the green screen. Okay. So here we have this graph, and if you want to do the math thing, it's a well, technically it's a undirected graph, and because it's undirected, they're cycles, that's a given. Um, this, however, can work also with directed graphs and other algorithms, or sorry, and, and other uh, types of graph. So if you, if you wanna do the master presentation, remember, you can do this. I think S, G H S. I believe I called it S because it's to say starting point. That reminds me, I guess, I guess I should just start there then. And then the edges, I'm not gonna list them all, but because it's undirected, you use the curly brackets. 
So like you go A to B, then you got A to S, then you have S to C, and so on. So you'd have all, you'd have a total of two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten, uh, 10 of those in there. Okay, so that's what this represents for the graph. And so I guess as, as I have it here, we're gonna start with S. So that'll be a starting point. So the algorithm that we want to do is breadth first search. And so let me tell you without, without the, so forget, you know, I'll show it to you two ways. I'm gonna show it to you just how you would do it off the top of your head. And then I'm gonna show you the program, the way you would actually code it, you know, cause there's one, one, one way is doing an algorithm by hand. Another thing is programming in it and all the little tidbits that you don't wanna miss out on. And so, you know, we'll go ahead and do that and do, do that version first. So the idea between depth first search, breadth first search and topological sort, you can think of them as traversals, how you had them in trees, but in this case for entire graphs. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and say that level order traversal in the binary tree is actually breadth first search. If you go back to, to think about how that works, in that case, a tree is a directed acyclic graph. And so the, the way that traversal works is you start out at the root, which you, you, you pick as your starting point, I suppose. And then from there, you go ahead and you go to the next neighbors from there, print all of them out, in this case, from left to right. And then you go to the next layer that are two sort of nodes away from the, uh, from the root or two edges away from the root. And then you print those out, which this is also two edges, two edges away. So, so, so level order in a way is printing by level. And that's actually how breadth first search works in an entire graph is just expand the idea. So it's, it's, it's quite uh, trivial in that sense. So because this is our starting point, Breath first search says that we want to visit each node and print it out in the order that they appear from the root in terms of how deep they are. So if something is one edge away from S, so one line away, that should always be printed out first before anything that is more than two edges away. So D should always be printed out before C because C is one edge away. So right now this, this is unweighted and so you can think of all of these taking the same time. So let's say that each of these edges takes one second to, 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 to traverse. And so I'm saying, if I start from S and I have a bunch of people ready to run, you know, from S, like I got, uh, I got 10 people running out of S and all those people, they're each going to run to a different uh, vertex. Like that's, that's their goal. And so uh, if, if here, I can, I can try to color code this actually, this might be cool. So we got a bunch of people that are going to be running to different uh, vertex. Each one has their goal is to run to a different vertex. Okay, they're all, they're, think of it like like the lip, they're all pizza delivery people on Super Bowl day. So they are they're all going to deliver at different addresses. However, address D is on the way from address C. So ideally, you'd think that maybe he would take both pizzas, but no, no, no. Here they got they want to do the fastest delivery, so they're all going to their own uh, place, and so. If you timed it and each of these edges, I said, takes one minute, that's like driving time. Then let's say that this one's going to go to G. So in one minute, he's going to go there. And then in one minute, he's going to go here. In one minute, this one's, he's going to go there. And that's pretty much it because if, 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 if purple here is going to have to go to B, it's going to take him one minute to go there and then another minute to go there, right? So that one will take him two minutes, whereas the other people are, are taking one minute. So if, if, if the moment that they deliver the pizza, they call in and say, I have arrived and delivered this pizza, then you expect A, C, and G to both call in around the same time, but you expect the guy from B to call in about a minute later. However, at the same time that he calls in, you're gonna have the guy from, uh, from S who went to say D, because that took him one, two minutes there. So he's gonna call around the same time as B, and so is the people from, so is the guy from F. So the guy from F can go in, in, in two possible paths per se. He, 
he could go this way or he could go this way but either of those take take basically two two minutes right because it's two two edges so here I'll, I'll actually draw them in both uh both ways just to represent that it means the same but ultimately the guy from f is going to call at the same time that the guy from b and d calls finally we have e and h E and H are going to be the last people to call. So we got here. We have that's the guy for for uh, for H, and here's the guy for E. Okay, so or here I'll put the guy from, from for E up here. And so these guys again, they're all leaving at the same time. You know, for example, hold on. The E guy is going to go to C first, or he's just going to drive past C. But when he actually is driving past C. That's the same for E, right? Yes, yeah, so E and H are gonna be the same. So, oh, oh snap, my bad, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, 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 I, I, I didn't see it that way, yes. So actually, both E and H are going to be arrived at the same time that D and F arrive, because it's actually just two hops, right? S goes to C and C goes to E. And actually, same for H, it's just two hops as well, because even though it looks like they're further away, this, the, I didn't say the graph was to scale, it's just two hops. So actually, we're gonna have A, C, and G call at the same time, then both, then B, D, F, E, and H are all actually gonna call at the same time because they're all two minutes away. So there's nobody from this graph that's three minutes away. If we had one more node that was like, say uh, here, that was called X, and that was connected here or here or here, it doesn't actually matter. Any of those would take three hops. So that guy would take three minutes. So that's basically breadth first search. Breadth first search is the idea of printing out the nodes by distance from the starting node. Now in trees, we always said that the starting node was the root. Here, you can pick any node and depending on what node you pick as your root, you're going to have an entirely different breadth for search traversal. In other semesters, I've had students like sometimes, you know, pick different algorithms for different semesters. I've had them code this algorithm um, in and I say, do the traversal actually for all nodes. So you, you pick one, you know, you, you basically pick a, pick one node to the traversal, pick another node to the, do the breadth for search, pick one node and then you print them all out because that gives you some in, in information about how far away from each uh, node is the other node. So do you have a formal definition for breadth first search? Um, like an actual formal, formal definition? I mean, I should, if you wanna have like the, the one to remember per se, right? Like the one you wanna remember. Uh, breath research. Oh, I found I found something useful though. This 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 definition I was looking for the other day, so I'll put it in. It's called. Uh, I'll put this in the little box so you don't like get confused on what ha where this came from. Uh, in degree and out degree. So this might feel random, but in degree and out degree means the number of edges entering a vertex V and out degree is basically the whole kind. In fact, the same thing, I'm just gonna copy paste. The number of edges leaving a vertex V. So, this is a little bit random, but if you were to remember it when I, when I was saying the degree of the graph, the degree of a node the other day, this this is the formal definition of that. So degree is is I suppose not not detailed enough. Usually when you're talking about degree, you're talking about the out degree. But if you want to be super specific, you can say out degree, which is the number of edges. So for example, the out degree of node C of vertex. C is one, two, three, four. And so is the in degree. So here's the thing. With an undirected graph, the in and out degree are gonna be the same. With a directed graph, they're gonna be different because that's, so in a directed graph, suppose that I had this going in, this going in, and these two coming out, then, well, <laughs> okay. 
maybe three of them going in and one coming out. Now they're different. So the in degree is three, the out degree is one. Otherwise it would have been two and two. So I was defeated at the point of making them different. Uh, that means it's not on the test. Lol, you took way too long. Well, I don't usually ask you like in tests, like define formally what a hash is or what a tree is, right? I mean, I'll ask you some concepts like, like with trees, you know, something about the height or the level of it. You know, I'll ask you those concepts, but I don't find any, uh, any value in, in being able to formally define something with fancy words if you don't know what it really means, right? Like I'd rather you know what, like how it works and what it actually is useful for than the, the fancy definition. However, they're nice to have too, you know. I mean, not, don't get me wrong. It's just that I, I prefer you guys to focus on that. I mean, I did do notice that I did kind of go a little hardcore on that uh, because I do find that actually useful just because then mad people don't laugh at us. But uh, I don't usually do that for other things. Uh, anyways, breadth for search. Uh, I have here that for search, but doesn't even have like a well, all right, so here's 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 what I have for this. BFS stands for breadth first search, which is what we're doing. So BFS visits each vertex in successive layers away from the calling vertex and then I have random code which I can I can show you or you can just google it on geeks for each or something on how to do that since we're not actually implementing it oh cool here we have it I have Hamlet's holding pass and everything here to refresh me on that that one's for it. I mean, the only path is when we want to traverse the entire graph by visiting each node exactly once. And then the Eulerian path is, can we do the entire thing by visiting each edge once? Don't worry about that. If we get to talk about that, we will. If not, you'll talk about it in 351. <coughs> but I put that down there because I always get them confused. And then I, I know you guys brought it up the other day too. So anyways, that's what I have as formal as I have. You want to go more formal than that, check the book or check Geeks for Geeks. Um, on, I did already post it on Canvas, a, a link to the Geeks for Geeks, but even in Geeks for Geeks, it says like, breadth first search traversal for a graph is similar to breadth first traversal of a tree, which is level order. The only catch here is on like a tree graph may contain cycles, so we may come to the same node again. That's a good point. Uh, to avoid processing a no more than once, we use a visitor array. And yes, okay, so, so so even then they don't have that. So here's the thing, that, that brings up a good point. So with a tree, whenever we did the breadth first search traversal, which is level order, we never have the issue where we visit a node twice. Here's the thing. Here, when I was doing this, I did tell you that as the delivery drivers were driving to say D or E, they had to go through Z. And so, when I'm showing it to you here, it's obvious you don't want to print the same nodes, the vertex twice. When you're coding it, your code is like, your computer is like, yo, that's not obvious to me. You gotta be specific about that. So we need to have time to make sure that we have a specific array called just a Boolean array or like a flag array so that once you print out a node one time, you don't print it out again. So you don't have the same, so cause otherwise, the delivery driver that's going to D and passes by C, you don't want him to print C because C has already been taken care of. Uh, okay, so we have questions. Is there a specific order in which the BFS business vertex in a certain level, like how level order goes left to right? Uh, yeah, so no. Usually, because you got to implement, you, not you got to implement it now, but I'm saying if you were to implement it, you want to pick which to go first. So you can go alphabetical, ascending, ascending order on the name of the node, but it's not, doesn't really matter. Uh, so like, for example, which one should get printed first, A, C, or G? Technically, none of them, it doesn't matter. I think the best way to do it is just to go alphabetical. So print A, C, G, and then on layer two, print B, D, E, 
f h g um or sorry not g but h and so yeah but there is no stated rule saying they have to go in from specific order uh technically speaking that applies to trees as well the level of order traversal of a tree you know usually we print out left to right but the mirror version of that right to left would also be considered a level order traversal of a tree uh something that we never really discussed but and because it's not it makes no sense in the sense that like, it's not very useful because the level order is useful because we know for a fact it's left to right if we don't know that that adds another level of complexity when trying to build a graph like wait it wait why but so usually you do left to right like with heaps and everything it's always left to right but technically if you were to put right to left on a test i'd have you have a good argument for that being a valid answer as well the delivery driver, unfortunately, didn't get a tip. He got scammed by the uh, by the person. So, in fact, he was just lucky not to get COVID nineteen when he delivered the pizza. So, yes, give give him some uh, f's for that delivery driver there. Uh, anyway, no, I don't know. Maybe he. Got, who knows? Statistically, what is it like? Fifty percent of people don't tip. So I say half of these gave tips. Half of them didn't give tips. <laughs> Uh, I'm joking. Maybe it was included in the pizza already. Maybe. Although normally they, they scam you, right? Like, that's the thing. If the delivery fee or whatever on pizzas is not really a tip. It's more of just profit for the company. But they, they make it sound like it's a tip. So so you don't feel bad about paying it. But then you, you screw over the delivery drivers. So, okay. Uh, don't worry. No delivery drivers were harmed in the making of that example. Okay. So now... Last thing I will do is I will show you, not really last because it's quite a considerable, but is I'm going to show you how to do the how to do the same tra traversal, but for search, but implementation wise. So this is you actually are you know if you were implemented, how would you actually implement this in a computer? And with that first search, you use a stack, but you could also just do it recursively and be good to go. With this. Uh, recursion is not really useful. It's better to do it iteratively uh, and to use a queue. So you, data structure is required, I suppose, to be able to do that first search is a queue. What kind of queue could you use? Well, you, if you were to use a queue, then you don't have to make a priority queue. You just have to make a normal queue. So like assignment four or whatever that was, if you were to implement it, you could have used that. Okay. And so how do you do this? Okay. Well, first we make our queue. So I just made a queue. Here we have the front. And here we have, actually, I, I like the front being on the bottom. So we'll put the front on the bottom and we'll put the back on the top. Okay. And then the other thing we're going to need is a visited array. The visited array is so that we don't print an, a, a vertex twice. Once we print it one time, we don't want to print it ever again, even if it gets visited multiple times. So let's go ahead and copy all the uh, val all the uh, name of vertices here. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I think there is there H? Yeah, there's H and there's S. Oh, snap. And we're going to initialize that to zeros, but I'm not going to put it in because then I have to erase them, but I'll put it here. Init to false. Okay, so that those are our two little uh, datas that we need. And then the third thing we need is just where we're going to store the traversal. So in this case, we're just going to print it to screen. But if you wanted to store it somewhere, you could. So we need to pick a starting point. So in this case, we were given to start at S for start. So because you, whatever your root or your starting node is, is the first thing that you print out in the traversal that is breadth for search because that's where you're starting and that's you don't need to go any layers deep in that. That's actually going to be the first output. 
So I'll put it here, VFS traversal. Also, you want to mark that as visited. So I marked that. Okay. Uh, I don't think you have to put S in the queue. I think it's a given. Yeah, I wouldn't put it in. But um, yeah, you're good to go. If you did, then you just take it out immediately after. So that's it. So you print out the S where you're starting from, you mark it as the use, and now you're ready to go. So what do you do now? You look at the, when you coded your graph, if you coded it using an adjacency uh, matrix, you would be looking at the matrix to see what edges are coming out of S. So look at the edges coming out of S, and then uh, figure out what those nodes are, and then write them down. So what edges are coming out of S? We have S2A, S to C, and S to G, right? And this we found either in your adjacency matrix or adjacency list. If it was the adjacency list, somewhere in there would be S and you would have A, C, G. If it was an adjacency matrix, like I said, it would be a 2D array. And somewhere there you have a column for S and you have A, B, all the way to G and you'd have three lines somewhere in there, okay? Uh, the final one is if you were using pointers. If you were using pointers, you would have something called a node. And in that node, you have uh, something like child array, I suppose. And that array is dynamically allocated so that you can make it the size that it has to be. And that size is going to be your out degree. And so what you can do is you can put that in a loop. In a for loop that goes through each of those childs and gets you what, what they are the references what that point what is that what that's pointing to because this is a it's a pointer array to to other vertices connected to it okay so ultimately i would refresh if you're if you're lagging if not at least i'm recording it I think I think we're good now. I think it was it was a little bit red, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll go over this part again just in case that it was it was it lagged. But like I said, if not, then it, you can watch that piece in the video. But but basically, what you want to do is to find out what edges are connected to S. If you if you have an adjacency list, you can look at the entry for that where it has ACG. And then if we have uh, adjacency matrix. You can look at the at the row that has for s and look at what is set up to one and then the third option is you can look at if, if you're dealing with pointers is there's probably an array of pointers that is basically all the children that are connected and that's going to decide so that is the out degree of the node and then you can basically for loop through all of them and the reference what those no, what the node is so any of those three will go and yes i will review for the midterm after this topic uh, and yes, I can go over some of the answers for worksheet three. We can we can actually just do worksheet three like right now when I finish. Uh, especially the ABL tree example because we can do that as the example for ABLs. Okay, so yeah, so any of those is how you would implement that part. So okay, the point is once you have that implemented, you have a way of accessing what are the direct uh, connections to the node that you're looking at. So you're looking at S. That's going to give you three things. That's going to give you A, C, and G. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert them into our queue. And this is the front, so we're going to put A, C, and G. Furthermore, we're also going to add them to our output. Do we add them to our output at this point? Mm. No, don't add them to your output at this point. Otherwise, you'll get some errors. You only add them to your output when you visit them. Yes, I'm glad I caught that. You, otherwise, it will mess things up. You'll see why they would mess things up. But do not add them to your output until you visit them. Just add them to the queue. So you add A, C, and G to the queue because there are direct connections from S. That's it. Don't add them to the output yet. After you do that, after you've added them to the queue, now you can say you're done with S and 
Hence for it, it's marked as visited. You move on to the next thing to look at. How do you know what to look at next? You take whatever's at the top of the queue, the front of the queue. So that's the A. So you DQ the A. And now when you DQ it, now you add it to your output. Now you add it to the output, not before, okay? You can mark it as visited and you're good to go. Okay, now that we're at A, so we're here now, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing that we did before. We're gonna, depending if it's a JCC list, matrix, or pointers, we're gonna get all the possible nodes that are coming out of A, which are A, B and S. So they're both B and S are going there. So we're gonna add to the queue anything that hasn't been visited yet. So do we add B? Yes, because we haven't visited yet. So we go ahead and add B to that. Let me move this down so I don't run out of space. And then do you add S? You don't add S to the back of the queue because it's been marked as visited and you don't add any notes to the queue that have already been marked as visited. So we're good on that. Yay, okay. This could have gone wrong really bad if I didn't catch that little issue. So, okay. So that's it. We've added all the notes to the queue that come out of A. We can, we already marked A as visited. We are now officially done with A. The next thing we're gonna pick is whatever's at the top of the queue. What is at the top of the queue? The C. So we're gonna DQ the C, add it to our output whenever we DQ it. And now we're working with C. First thing you wanna do so you don't forget is you mark it as visited in your Boolean array. And now we're gonna add all the nodes that are connected to C, and that's a lot. You would see that, that you know, if we were looking at the adjacency list, you'd see you've got S, D, E, F, right? For edges. And so we are not gonna add S because yet again, we've already visited, but D, E, and F have not been visited, so they will be added. D, E, and F. Is there an example? Yeah, there's, okay, cool, cool. I just was checking to see if there's a special edge case that I wanna show you, so yes. Okay, so D, E, and F have been added to the queue, which covers basically D, E, F. We don't add S because it's already been marked as visited and we're good to go. Uh, we already marked it as visited, so everything is great. So yes, okay. We can go ahead and DQ the next thing. So the next thing that we got to DQ is going to be G. So G is coming out of the queue, being added to the output. Before we forget, the first thing we should do is add it to the visitor array. And now we're like G. So it's like, what up G? All right, so from G, we have three things. We have S, F, and H. Okay, so this is good because F has already been added to the queue. So you should be wondering what happens now. Well, it turns out that we are going to go at, you know, we have, we have, a, we have two ways that we can handle this. First of all, S we don't add because it's already been visited. A H we do add because it has not been visited, but then you're asking yourself, do we add F? And so you see that there's an F already in the queue. So, should we add another one to the end of that? And it turns out that you can do both, both, both options. Option one is you look to see if what you are going to add to the queue has already been added to the queue. And if so, then you don't add it uh, and you're good to go. That's all you gotta do. Option B is you can add it to the queue. However, when you DQ something, the moment you DQ it, you check if it's been, if you've already visited it. And if you have, then you don't do anything again. But even if you do, you'll see 
that it's not going to cause any problem because you've already visited everything that I could take you to. In fact, even though normally I would not add it because it's already there, I'm going to go ahead and add it just to prove to you that that's the case. Okay, so we'll add F in there. All right, so that takes care about everything from G. All right, and so now the next thing that's going to come out is B. So DQB out, market is visited, and we're ready to go. We're going to have to move things down. Oh, snap. Just to make sure that we don't run out of space. Notice that the way that this is working is, I mean, it is working. We got ACG and they're all alphabetical and now we got B. So it's working alphabetically because I'm picking them. I'm, look, I'm adding them to the queue in a sort of alphabetical manner. But if not, again, it doesn't matter if they're not alphabetical there as long as they're in breadth for a search order. Okay, so B, B is an easy one because B is only has one edge coming out and that's A. However, uh, as you can see here, A has already been visited, so we don't need to add it in. We only add uh, we only add vertices that have not been visited, so we don't need to add anything for B. So that's it. We're done. We're done with B. So we go ahead and DQ the next thing, which is D. Mark it as visited before we forget. And now we're here. Again, that's an easy one too, because all we got to do for that one is add C to the queue. But C has already been visited, so nothing happens. We're good to go. As you can see, it starts getting easier once you get closer to the end because a lot of the edges have already been added. Oh, sorry, a lot of the vertices have already been added. All right, so let's take out the next one. Let's take E out. E for easy, easy test, right? Okay, mark E. And so E is going to two places, to C and H. C has already been visited, H has not been visited. So technically, again, if you see that it was already there, you wouldn't add it, but we're gonna add it just to show you that it's not a problem. Okay, we're done with E. So now we can go ahead and DQ the next thing. So we're gonna get our first F. Mark it as visited. And F is going to C and G. C has already been visited. Uh, G has not, uh, Oh, it has been visited already, yes. It's been marked as visited. And so at that point, nothing gets added. So at that point, we're done with F. But before I go further, I see there's a question. So for F, would it be faster to just check if it's visited during the DQ instead of checking the entire queue for another F? Well, think about it. Checking the visited array is an end time operation because you got to check all of it. Unless you get like binary search or something, then it's login time. On the other hand, unless the queue is full, it should be less than n time, right? Although technically, if you can add more than if you can add the ladder multiple times, but you won't because you're checking for it already, it means that theoretically that must can go as n time. So I'd say that unless you can set this up in some sort of sorted manner to reach login, it's not going to make much of a difference, but you might get lucky here that this thing is not all the way to n, whereas this will be always n, or even the omega will always be n. So I'm not saying one way is better than the other. I'm just trying to show you that the, the uh, that is not as it's not completely that one way is just totally better than the other one. In fact, I'd say maybe the top one gets you a little bit better luck, uh, unless you get that log in working for the, for the visitor array. So yeah, but it's a good thing to think about. Okay, so finally we got the H, so we DQ the H. You know, if you want to be fancy, you could have the visited value in the vertex itself as a little flag. So when you DQ it, you can just check the vertex. If you're using the pointer system, you can check the vertex itself to see if it has been visited already. And then you could you could speed it up too that way. So you could potentially make it constant time if you did it that way. So in in, in the vertex itself in the node, you could add in have I been visited there, 
And so, and they all, and even though you have multiple of those there, they all point to the same one. So you could access it, right? You could also make a hash table here and hash those into a hash table, and then you could make it all of one, right? So yeah, you could potentially do that operation all of one if you take advantage of other data structures like a hash table or putting it as a, as a member as a, as a member variable inside the node if you have pointers, or even if you're using it like a JCC matrix, you could just mark all of the column for the letter or something. Uh, but again, I think if you really want to go for speed, I think you you could take advantage of using a hash table for the Boolean array. So that'd be kind of cool to implement. Maybe I'll do that next semester. So, okay. We got H in there. So we go ahead and mark it as visited. What does H go to? H goes to G and E. So again, uh, oh, well, in this case, you don't even add them actually because um, they've been visited. So you don't add them. G and E have been visited, so you don't add them at all. You only add things that have not been visited, even if they're already in the queue, which we were just talking about, there's ways around that so that it's more efficient. Because now what's going to happen is we're going to get F, but the moment we take it out, we don't add it to our output because we see that it's been visited, so nothing happens to it. Same with H. We, don't, we see that it's been visited, so we don't add it to our output. The way you know you're done with the algorithm is the queue is empty. And so now you get your output. Yeah, look at that square or rectangle technically. And is it correct? Well, we got uh, these three first. That's good. ACG. And then the rest of them don't matter the order. But we do have BD in there. We have E, we have F, and we have H. So we did, in fact, successfully apply the uh, breadth first search algorithmically. So even though you're not coding it in class, you pretty much have all the steps now to do it. You should be able to very easily apply a queue to this, um, a hash table or just a Boolean array. And then uh, you haven't implemented technically these two, how to make the graphs or the nodes, but don't worry, you will do that in that uh, last assignment or even in the minimum span entry assignment. So you will get you will get practice with that. So even though you don't necessarily do the breath first, you, can, you should be able to do it. So yeah, applause. Okay, <laughs> I'm I'm glad it, it it came out clean. We could have we went we went towards a dark path for a second there when I was about to add those letters in, but then the light came back on. So all right, so um, I think I'll use that for uh, the screenshot for the lecture. Okay, that's it. Uh, any questions on this before we jump into the review? And I'm glad that we did that because I think I think the extra time will be appreciated on the test. And even if you're shut down right now because of the test tomorrow, uh, you can rewatch this later and refresh your mind. So, okay. All right, let's go into the review. So how about that worksheet? So unless you guys have questions already, then I can just pop, I can just pop open the worksheet. Can you scroll up for a second, please? How far up do you want me to go? I mean, you could you could like open the second tab of my of my channel and then pause the video maybe. You've been shut down to the top of the page? Like that? Oh, the time complexity part maybe? Uh, what is the time complexity of this algorithm? It's the number of vertices plus the number of edges. But that's, that's kind of hand-waving a little bit because of the stuff with the Boolean array that we were talking about. No, like the top of the drawing. I mean, that's the drawing. It's that the fact that there's a delay, so I don't know. How higher do you want me to go? I mean, that is the top of the drawing. Unless you want to see the code that, that. Yes, there. Oh, man, there's so much delay that I'm just going to leave it like that. And let me know if that's good. All right, I'm, I'm going to open up the worksheet and uh, work out some of those problems. Obviously, we already talked about the uh, the hashing one. You will have a question like that in the test, but the function itself should be a lot easier. All right, you got it, nice, okay. So here I got the, uh, I got the worksheet open on the other screen here. And so we have the first question, if a complete binary tree is stored in an array of size n, 
and I have a node in index X, what is the formula to identify? So that was actually something that I talked about in uh, one of the lectures that literally had that idea during the lecture and I told you guys and I went over the answer too. Uh, basically, all you gotta do is use the, the, the concept that a child is basically X times two plus one and X times two plus two. And of course, this, this is if you already start from zero. If they start from one, then it's just x times two and x times two plus one. And so this will be the left and this will be the right child. But the question is asking for the grandchildren, but that's okay. It's like recursion. You apply, you apply the same thing twice. This becomes like your y. And then you do the same thing to y. Uh, Let's call those, let's call them, uh, I would call them Y1 or Y2. And then Y2. And there you go. There's your answer. Of course, I could simplify by plugging in the values. Uh, I'll do that for one of them. So let's say we do it for, the, for, for this one, the first one. So what you want to do is you want to plug in. Uh, let me let me let me sh do shorthand for this instead of x this x times two. We'll just call it two x. Same thing. So we got two x plus one, and this gets multiplied times two, and one added to it. So if you want to simplify that, four x plus two plus one, which is equal to four x plus three. So there we got the first one. If you wanted to do that for the second one, then it should be the same thing, uh, except it will be plus four. And then for the second example, I guess I'll do that. Why not? That would be two X plus two times two plus one. That is 4x plus 4 plus 1, which is equal to 4x plus 5. And then the second one should be 4x plus 6. So there we go. And that should be the same thing that we did on the, on the lecture before. But yes, easy, right? Basic algebra, I hope. OK, here, I'll leave it open for a second. So the next one is saying, given the following binary tree, please provide the following traversals. Do you want me to do that? Or do you want me to move on? I'll move on. If you want me to do that, just let me know in the chat. Because the traversal one's kind of easy. I'd rather do the other one, which is like building the tree. Yeah, I'll move on. That's what I thought. Traversals is, you know, just remember, I suppose. Remember the rules. That's post order, in order, pre order. Do you want us to illustrate the traversals? Um, no, you can, but you don't have to. So, like, you know, really easy example here. There, the traversal for the the uh, post order, for example, would be this, and then from there you'd go here that way so if you were to illustrate that that'd be kind of hard to do i mean you could like draw a step by step that'd just be that'd be too complicated not for that so i i, I wouldn't i would not have to i wouldn't illustrate it for for uh for the traversals as long as you explain this part this is this this is big put that on your put that on your test okay someone says do it you want me to do the traversals really I, I, okay. So, how about I read them out loud? So I don't have to spend time running them. So, post order again is going to go here's and whoa. Whoa. Okay. So it goes to there, N O, then it goes to the T. So, N O T A, not A. Oh, I'm missing another E, my bad. I forgot that that's what this said. 
So I guess that the, the, the traversal is not, not a weave. Yeah, there we go. So so the, the, the post order is not a weave, basically. So you go there, there, and then you go there, A, 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 and then you go weave, okay? So that's, that's the correct thing for post order. Yes, not a weave. So like me, but anyways. Okay, in order is going to be N, then O, A, T, B, E, W, E. Okay? What about these lies on my worksheet? There are no lies. There are only facts of life. The others are fake news. Finally, pre-order. Pre-order is going to be... Uh, so here we can. I can actually for the in order one. I can I can show you the line of how it goes. So you so you so you st you go down here, and you print this, then you print that, then you go ahead and you print uh, this, then that, then you print this, then this, then this, and then this. We should have done that for the other one. And then for pre order, you're gonna go ahead and print that, print that, print that, print that. Print that, print, print, print. Okay. Oh, that really does remind me. Yes, you will get an access code in uh, twenty-two hours from now, eleven thirty. I I set it to automatically email at eleven thirty a.m. And that is not the access code actually. Uh, okay. So now this one. Uh, laziness hits me as I'm looking at copying these letters down. Uh, whoever has the worksheet open, triple check that I don't make a typo on these. <laughs> Otherwise, the tree will not build. Oh, I can look at this screen, and that way I can keep looking. Oh, but then I blocked that. Nice. Okay, so SP3COI1ALE. V C three P O is alive. The reason I put that is because the chatbot is not dead. He just uh, he just got cyber bullied into silence. All right. Uh, imagine coding a secure system and using, <laughs> and then the twenty five system is compromised and everything post online. He is gonna hate. All right. Um, okay, so what are these? Pre-order and in order? Yeah, pre-order and in order. Final project is break canvas, hashing system, don't lock the test. You know, if you can do that, you can get an A for the class, because I mean, that's respectable. So, yeah. As you can see, I never took ethics and hacking, the 301 class. Okay, so yes, this you definitely have to illustrate. In fact, I can go ahead and illustrate for you uh, at least part of it. Otherwise, we'll, this this will go on for three hours um, on how how you would illustrate this. Okay, so this is pre-order. So remember, root is that, and here's our root. And I guess the first thing you want to do is you want to say root. Okay, and then maybe circle it here too. That already tells me that you know what you're doing, at least partially. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to draw the tree with those things split. So it's the tree POI. And yes, it took a while to actually figure this tree out so that I could create that message. So respect. Okay. And that's it. That's the first illustration that you got to do. The next illustration you got to do is for the P. So what you can do if you want to be nice and clean about it is you could actually copy this over you know down here you don't have to make it that big and then now you can go ahead and remark what you're looking at obviously if you have multiple colors you don't have to do this whole thing but i already forgot what the letter was oh it's forces us because we just looked at this um and you can mark that as p I also put a different color. 
Okay, and then you redraw your tree. And yes, the TAs did do this when they took the test and they still had plenty of time to do it. Plenty. Make that your new root. And there you go. Okay. Uh, define plenty. Plenty as in at least half an hour. How about that? At least half an hour. Maybe more, but I don't want to say. Did the TAs do well, though? That's a good point. I don't know. <laughs> I'm assuming they did. Like, I, I didn't actually grade it, but, you know, I'm pretty sure they did. If I made a test, would you pass? That's a random question. They might have just BS the test. I highly doubt it. I'm pretty sure that they are capable of doing this kind of stuff. Um, unfortunately, though, I, when the TS took the test, even though they did the whole uploading part, it, it doesn't save it when they hit the final submit button, so everything gets deleted. And so otherwise, I could have actually opened and seen the submissions. But you know, they, 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 it was two of them, so that should make sure that they got everything right. And they did catch two errors. Uh, one of them actually was a typo on a, on a delete on the uh, on the ABL. And actually, the other one was on, on the question like this. I, I It was something like this where, like I said, I forgot the V. And that just breaks everything because then the tree doesn't build. So I'm glad they caught that. And it was kind of obvious because one of them was, one traversal was one letter less than the other one. And it's just when I copied and pasted it from my own like thing that I was doing onto, onto Canvas that I, have for, that I didn't copy that last letter. So they fixed it. So like, I'm really happy that, that they took it because we have two questions that are big, the ABL and this and the build a tree questions that, I mean, yes, you could have asked, but that would have been just a mess. Because like, how to make an announcement. Oh yeah, the typos here. People don't have, you know, bad, bad things. But yeah, so I'm happy. Uh, they probably just going to, no, no, they didn't. And also, like I said, they included in the time, the uploading and everything. And they were slower than you guys about that because you guys had practiced it with the, with the uh, practice quiz. I think they had, they had never tried it. So they didn't know exactly how to handle it. So they were kind of learning as you went. So they could have probably finished even faster if they had actually had practice doing that. But you guys do. You, you hopefully already have a system set up of how you're going to actually upload the questions. So that should speed you guys up as well. Uh, you're able to, to revisit questions. So you can always set everything up if you're not working on the computer. And then at the end, transfer everything at once. So you, you don't have to transfer one at a time. By the way, I do know, I wouldn't recommend you try that, but I do know that if you close the test, like the URL, like let's say your web, your computer crashes, you can go back in. It will let you. I mean, the, it, the timing will still count, but like, you know, if you crash and reboot, reboot in five minutes, that's a slow PC, but say you do that, then you should be able to jump right back in where you were. And it should save everything you've submitted so far. No way, everybody's uploading assignments as we went online. Yeah, but you know, this is a little bit different because it's drawings. So most people, maybe they were coding and uploading assignments that they coded, whereas here you have pictures and stuff. Mine showing in a post and pre-order way. Well, I'll talk about post and pre-order in a second, sure. That is very reassuring. What part? I don't even know, there's so much stuff that's happening. I, my attention span just left me. Okay, anyways, let, let me just keep going here. So I'll do one more of like clean, how you, how you expect it, and then I'll just smash everything together for the sake of not putting people to sleep here. Um, so the next one that we want to look at is three. And three is right here. So because three is right there, you could also put this on the test if you want. That sort of visual aid that tells you whether it's left and right like that, that could be useful. Basically, 
And if you do this on paint, you can uh, you can copy and paste like I'm doing too. Just take take the extra minute to uh, to not make it nasty. You know, make it make it readable. If you can't read your answers, then that's the end of that. Slash PC exclamation PC question mark. Oh, the PC stuff. Oh. I keep having to download new PDF scanning apps because they usually are just trials for a few days. There is one that's free forever that the uh, the deans um, the associate dean posted. Uh, I, I I sent it out on an email or I posted it on Discord. So remind me and I'll send you the link again. Uh, it's supposedly free forever. I think it was developed by the students actually. So that's cool. So yeah, you can do that. And if you have iPhone, like uh, Home, you said here, there is an app for that. Um, yeah, you guys share on chat all possible all possibilities. Question: Is this like that last test where we were the worksheets were easy and the test wants us to know the circumference of the sun? Yes, of course. I mean, the worksheets are are only supposed to help you practice like the bulk of the. Uh, the algorithm questions. I do throw in one of the theoretical questions, but yes, there's more theoretical questions in the test. But let's put it this way. If you can do the worksheet questions really good, even if you screw up the theoretical ones, you should be able to get a huge chunk of the test points. Like ABL question is like a quarter of the test probably. Like I it, I think it's like, well, no, it's six. I think it's 600 points for the ABL question and the test is 4,000 points. So. Yeah, it's, it's less than that. But then there's a follow-up question on the ABLs. So it might be hitting around maybe 15 to 20% of the test points. So, I mean, that's a fifth right there. So if you can do the ABL question, you're good. This is probably like 400 points. This is 10%. And then the traversal is maybe another 10%. So, like, it adds up. So you should still be able to do the worksheet stuff. They should count for prereqs with what my master said. Do you know if they made a decision whether SUs will be counted for prerequisites? Yes. Uh, I guess that's a good thing to note here. So yes, they will count. An S will count, which technically means that if you get a D minus in the course, then then you're good for the next class. Whether or not you're actually good for the next class, like in knowledge, that's a different story. But you're good in, at least in the eyes of the uh, of the registrar's office. Uh, it has been confirmed. Ying Tao sent an email to me uh, after I, after somebody posted that thing on by on, two, on the two eighteen thing that you guys were saying about. I emailed Ying Tao and he confirmed. It is university wide, as far as I know, but double check. But for the CS department, at least that's the way it is, which is our class. So yes, D minus is the the goal, I suppose, which is depressing. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah, so as you can see here, this is this is what you do. So for the rest of these, how about I just uh, not overly illustrate, but this is what I want you to do for the test. And this is what the TAs added into the time for you to do. So it's really an extra minute. Here's taking me long because I'm talking to you guys, and that's mostly the reason why. But this should take you like two minutes at the most. So then you see C, and then you see O. So O is over here. So then the I goes there, so you mark that as done, and finally you get to the other side, which is the one. The one is there, so here's the one. So then these get nice evenly split that way. So I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll draw it again. What? That was weird. It just came back. And then from there, the A goes next. So that means that the A is going to be the root. And whichever comes first from the B or E is going to be the root. Uh, the E comes first. So. And you're done. Of course, you would have drawn multiple times like I did, like I was doing at the beginning. But see, you can do this fast if you're not if you're actually not talking to thirty people. Uh, we got forty viewers though. Viewership is going up. Okay, uh, 
Will there be another Glarus curve at the end? There will not be a curve. Uh, I think that the fact that the test is online and it's open that note is, any, is enough of a curve. So I don't think that this time around we'll see a curve. So, yep, that's the end of that. And there's no extra credit question either on the test. Can you show us how to illustrate building a heap? I will in a second. Just let me talk about pre-order and, and post-order because uh, somebody asked about that. So if you get a pre-order and, and post-order tree, there are multiple trees you can draw from that and there's no algorithm to do it. So you just kind of have to wing it uh, as far as I know, at least because there are multiple trees is not unique. So the way to do it is usually the easiest thing to do that I recommend is make a degenerate tree. So uh, where's our, where's that one example that we had? To, oh, we didn't actually write them down. Well, here, let's just do very quickly. Uh, uh, here we, here's the pre-order and we'll do the post-order real fast. So here we got that and then let's do the post order. So post would be C3 I O P L A B E on S. Bam, done. See, you should be able to do this fast. Easy. Uh, I know we're getting a lot of questions. I'm trying to go in the order they came, but if I do miss your question, do post it again. So I guess don't worry. So this will do heaps, and then we'll do this, the other random stuff. Okay. So the the best way to honestly handle this is to obviously you know that it has to be the root, and from there you want p. To, uh, to be the next, basically, root from there. So you can you can go left or right on that, but we're just gonna pick left. You do P, and so you got P taken care of. And then from there, the problem is that now, all of these have to go before P. In fact, one way that you could do them is probably like this and C. However, if that is the case, then the three would have to go first. So that doesn't work. So that means that you got to flip that and make the three go first. And so on. So you can see that this is a very, very hard thing to do by hand. So ultimately, you would go by trial and error and try to build it. Of course, I'm not gonna give you something this hard to do in the test. You most likely will get something that is simple if you get a question like this, because really there's no point in doing this. This is a real algorithm we talked about. We never did this as an algorithm or as a, a other than like a question on the lecture, on the uh, worksheet. But you can see how this is painful. If it was something smaller, so you're like, let me simplify this to make our life easy. So A, B, C, and D. Now we're talking something that is more manageable because the pre-order of this is basically A, B, C, D, and the post-order of this is gonna be B, D, C, A. And so now you, you, can, you can know for sure that A is the root, and then you know that B has to be a, child, a direct descendant of that. Uh, however, if it went on this side, then it would have appeared here, and it didn't, so they cannot go on that side. So that kind of is an obvious giveaway that it has to go on this side. We hit the C, the C can go here, here, or here. However, you see here that, uh, that the C comes before the end, which means it has to go here. Otherwise, C would have been the root. And so that brings it to the D. The D can go actually in any of these spots. It can go here or here. So you could have it here and you can call it a day. And you can also have it here. Oh no, my dog has come to say hello. 
Still a little dog. All right, dog's chilling here. See, I told you she's doing the hostile takeover for the for the lecture. Okay, so uh, yeah, so as you can see, one traversal, pre-order and post-order can produce more than one tree. So yes, okay. So let's see what else do we have. So can you show how to illustrate building a heap? So let's do that next. So let's go ahead and throw in maybe five numbers so we don't make it too big. So five, one, two three and maybe 10 and then let's go ahead and build a min heap or max heap which one do you want um in the meantime let's see what so tell me which one you want to make and then we'll do that uh max okay we got max so max heap remember the root is going to be the biggest number so, okay, let's just, let's just do both, since it's not big. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, so right now, if we're heapifying, we assume this to be some sort of le level order traversal, or at least that's how we're going to assume it to be. That's how heaps are works. Okay, it has to be a complete tree, so let me make this a little wider. Okay, so, uh, you do your triforce so that means you want to heapify that and you want to heapify that before you heapify the top one which is this one so let's go ahead and do that so let's heapify in fact i i think it's nicer to start right to left so let's do that one so it's a max heap so that those actually have to be flipped around over here you have two choices you have you can flip the one in the three and the one in the ten because it's a mass heap you want to pick the biggest one of the two which is ten so you swap the ten and the one okay now you can do the bigger one this one okay to do that you pick again the biggest one so it's five ten or five six in this case five ten Because you swap this right here, it may have ruined the uh, the blue triangles heap. So you gotta recheck that. So you kind of go back and forth. As you can see, it didn't ruin it here, but it could have. Because suppose that instead of the five there, we had like a two. And the two swap down here, then they would have to swap with the three. So in this case, it didn't break it, but it could have. Because it didn't break it, now this whole subtree is a, is, a, is a heap. And if this was part of a bigger thing, so like if you know this was a bigger heap, then at that point you would do the higher ups. Okay. So now you have heapified this. Let's go ahead and heapify this again with a min heap now. Questions. What? Can you tell us what we should hardcore study? That wasn't on the worksheet. Yeah. Some of the tree questions, like remember the five properties of he of trees and stuff like that. I would look at those because we we touched them and it's been a quite a, it's been quite a while. Even though you did get a question like that on the te on the on the worksheet. My guess is that most of you don't remember that. Fortunately, I do believe we have a iPad recording of those, so you can uh, you can check those out. Okay, so now we're doing a min heap. So in that case, that's good to go. <laughs> that's good to go, actually. That's not good to go because the one and the five should swap. Uh, and then this is good here because when this swapped, remember we got to check down. In this case, we do have to change something. So that's I'm glad that this is happening in this one. So we got to reheapify 
that subtree right here by swapping the three and the five. And now the whole thing is good to go. So now that's good to go. It is being recorded, yes. I ended up recording it since we do have lecture material. Okay, and I did a mini heap, so now you have two examples. So, uh, and now, of course, for any of these, if you want to delete something, so let's go ahead and delete something from this one. You always delete the root, so you get the 10 out. And then, you, and then technically what you do for that is what you're actually doing is you're swapping it with the last element of the array, which in this case is the two. And now you can mark it as sort of deleted. Like that. Okay. And after you do that though, you have to reheap, you have to fix the heap. So you have to bubble things right. So in this case, uh, it's a max heap, so you gotta swap the two and the six. And that's it, you're done. Because there's no nothing, there's no subtree here anymore. You don't have to do anything else. So let's do one more, I suppose. Let's, let's, let's pull out the next one, which is a six. How do we do that? We swap it with the last element. So in this case, that's the one. And then uh, we fix the heap. So it's a max heap. So we got to swap the one and the five. And then in this case, we got to check the subtree. And in this case, do we do have to do some swapping here. We have to swap the three and the one. And you're good. And you would repeat this rinse and repeat multiple times until everything is empty. Doing the same example here um, for the min heap. Let's go ahead and take out the delete, delete min or delete key. So you take out the one. How do you do that? You swap it with the last spot in the array. Because remember, this heap is stored as an array. And then you sort of mark that as done. How do you mark that as done? You don't have to mark anything technically. If, if you remember from implementation, I hope. Uh, all you really got to do is you got to keep a top integer and that points to the last spot of the heap that's valid. So in this case, it would point to the 10. It's kind of like the same thing as I say that you use when you're using a stack. So, okay. So now that we do that, the six has to be swapped with the two. And you're good. That two keeps saying hi. So you have to illustrate every check. Yes. Uh, so every time I draw something, you have to you have to redraw the tree. Every time you erase something, redraw it. So here, let's do that for the next one. So let's delete two. So what you would do is you take your existing tree, and then you would redraw it again, but with the ten here and the two there. So that will be one drawing. Okay, and you can say delete min, okay, and that takes out the two, okay. The next drawing would be swapping the three and the ten, okay. Next drawing would be swapping. The 10 and the 2. Or sorry, no, not the 2, not the 2, not the 2, because the 2 has been marked as the leader already. And the 10 shouldn't be a 10 there, I think it's a. What are we doing? Are we doing max save or min heap? I got lost for a second there. Okay, we're good, we're there, we're good. And then um, from there, we gotta swap the 5 and the 10. And that's it. So you do those three drawings for that. Okay? So every time you do a rotation of some sort, same with AVL, you do draw it. Okay, so where are we at on the questions? Uh, I mean, in the implementation, you have to modify the array. Array is just implicit representation while the heap is exclusive representation. Yes, yes, you're right. Okay. Uh, insertion and deletion for heaps. I've showed you deletion. If you would like to do an insertion, I can show you that real fast. Let's say we're inserting into this heap the number one, since that's actually going to be interesting.
We still haven't done an ABL exam, oh, by the way. Uh, I'm assuming now you don't want me to do the worksheet example on heat since we're doing that. But insert one. So we're going to insert one in the next spot, which would be here. And then we got to fix the heap. So what ends up happening is we have to swap the one and the five. We will, of course, redraw. Show that swap. Fail. <laughs> there we go. And then you redraw. Another thing you could do if you don't want to redraw is you could verbally explain you know, and redraw every two of them. So you can say like swap three and one. You know, you could write like swap. So you can say like swap uh, one and five, and then swap three and one. And if you do both of them, then you could have skipped this middle drawing. I'd be okay with that. Uh, so we have to illustrate every check with the leech. Should we disable our antivirus during the test? Uh, no, that shouldn't make a difference. If you, if you didn't have problems with the quiz, then you will not have problems with the test because I had everything set up there. So as long as you have the same settings you did with during the test ones, then you should be okay for the test. Okay. Are we good with heaps? Can we move on? Like I said, if you're um, if the if, if when you took the quiz on canvas the test quiz if you had no problems there then you would not have any problems during the test because any sort of security measures that i was running were already running then behind the scenes yes that is correct you insert at the bottom and you bubble it up is deleting from the heat meaning deleting any node no 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 you never ever ever delete anything but the heat but the root you always delete the root, which is the min of the max, just the way that heaps work. So do not uh, do not ever try to delete something in the middle. That's there. I mean, you could just reheapify the entire thing, but that's not the point of the algorithm. Heaps are meant to just get the minimum or maximum. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and do the ABL example from the worksheet now. So in the test, you will get a bunch of numbers. Each of them will say insert or delete, and then you will basically insert them in that order to the test, okay? By the way, I will re-emphasize, because I know people, some people mess this up on the, on the, on the, on the worksheet. When I give you the, uh, just like in the worksheet, the pre-order and in-order, I expect one tree from that. Don't build two trees, one for pre and one for in. No, 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 no. you're supposed to combine them and make the, the tree that we just did here, okay? So just making sure. Some people did it on the on the, uh, on the worksheet. So, okay. One, two, five, three, four, zero, and six. And then we have to delete three. Okay? So, how do you do this in the test? You start out with a one, then you draw it again and you put one and two. Then you do one, two, five. At that point, you perform a rotation. You don't have to put the rotation here. You can say left, right rotation, whatever. I believe this is a right rotation. But you don't have to do that as long as you put that. And the arrows to me signify a rotation. Okay. So now we got to enter the three. But here's the thing. Oh, yeah, that's right. I want you to make sure that you put your weights on each of these. You don't have to put them on the leave nodes, but you want to put them in everything else. Like that. You're right, it is a left rotation because it's going left. I'm left-handed, so I flip them backwards all the time. Like when I'm trying to give directions driving and I tell somebody to turn left, I have to think about which hand I write with. And then I'm like, okay, that's left. Okay, that's, that means I have to go left. Yeah. So that, that I don't know if you ever noticed that. 
in class, I would turn around the board and think. It's just really tricky for me with the left and rights. Yeah, because it is right heavy, you do a right left rotation. That is a very good way of thinking it, if you can remember which side is left. Just remember which hand you're right with. And I remember I write with my left hand, so that's how I know this is left. But yet, I guess I mess it up. Okay, so uh, four. Let's throw in four in the mix. Here, so we can be nicer about it. We can just copy paste. Does the laser pointer work anymore? No, it's still broken. Okay. Ah, four. That's a nasty one. That's going to break things up. You don't need to raw these weights right now because we have to perform the rotation first. So this is going to be a double. A double rotation. So you can draw the stuff. Like that. And then that way you can redraw it again afterwards. So in this case, it's a left rotation first. So this right here is a left rotation on that and then a right rotation on that. And so it's a left to right double rotation. Again, you can consider this to be right heavy at the beginning. So you do left and then not so right heavy, you do right. But I suppose this left rotation is on the on the grandchild because you're doing it here versus here's so the child so what I want to see is I don't need to see any of the text I want to see the drawings so you don't need to tell me which rotation it is you can if you would like but what I really care about is you showing me this steps very important that you show me these three steps here but I want to see all of them, but I'm saying those are the big pointers. Why we got a five in here? Oh, we do have a five, okay, good. So then we gotta insert zero and six. And if you wanna make this cleaner, then you can, uh, you can write on the top like, insert one, insert two, Insert five, insert three. Uh, where we forgot one? Uh, insert four. Zero. No, it's a it's a left right because you do a left rotation here to make it into four three and then you do the right to make the three four five into the into the four three four five like that. So I do think I'm correct on that one. Uh, to your question on that. Okay. So finally we have I think one more number to insert. I think it's gonna mess things up and then probably the six. No, then yay. Notice that I'm putting the weights. Make sure you put those weights in here. I wanna see them weights. Okay, finally we just gotta delete three and we're done. That should be easy, right? Huh, didn't copy the right one. Okay, delete three. 
that makes it a zero which means that we have to rotate there so that's an easy rotation that is going to be a left rotation because it's right heavy and so the brand new three is going to be that and there you go fitness motivation yes i always weight my trees you want to see those weights that's right i want to see those weights and they have to be balanced because it's healthy right it's not healthy to lift too heavy on one side and no heavy on the other side you want to lift the same weight with both hands right so all right cool so that's the example with illustrations for an avl uh, we already showed you how to heap with hashing. Okay. And then we will copy and paste this three times. And then the numbers we gotta throw into the mix here are going to be uh, 11, 20, 41, 42. 52, 33, 7, and 0. I think with uh, hashing, the hardest part is the one without collisions. For Oh. Um, yeah, question 7 is hard, but the one in the test is a lot easier. It seems like after every insert, the maximum number of rotations required is 1 or 2 if double rotation. You don't even have to look at the other subtree if you didn't insert into it. Well, you don't. You always just have to do in the worst case a double rotation. Now, there are more than one answer to this. Because, like, I performed a double rotation there because it was obvious. But suppose that I try to do a, a single rotation. If I try to do a single rotation, <coughs> I could have ended up with... Uh, so here. If this step is where I took the wrong path of no righteousness or whatever... And if instead of doing my double rotation there, I tried to do a single rotation, I would have ended up with the following tree. That is after performing, um, I think that's just a left rotation that I did on the parent. I would have ended up with that. And so, as you can see here, that's bad, right? That's okay. If, you, if that happens to you during the test, then uh, you can go back to this rotation or you can go right ahead from here and, and, and do your rotations. Oh, snap. Wait, 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 no, 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 no. Not those numbers like that. There we go. Much better now. So I think the way that you achieve that is by doing a right rotation. If in doubt, I can show you the old school way of doing this with the temporary node. Remember that? And then we got A, B, that's our C and our D. And then we rotate it like this temporary node here. D would go there, and then A and B would go here, and then the child 4 gets transferred from 3 to 5 like that. Once we do that, we can delete all of our temporary stuff. I'll do it on a different picture.
And as you can see there, that rotation wouldn't have taken us anywhere. If that is the case, at that point, two options. Option one, rotate back to how you had it. So just simply start from there. Just be like, bad rotation, on, you know, ignore that professor or something. And then, um, or you come from here. I don't recommend you do this because it'll make the TA's life harder because then they have to check this. But then you can uh, rotate it like that and then perform a rotation there. Uh, I would highly encourage you, however, to if this happens, just leave it on the test. Every work is good. I, I'm glad if, if I see that I'm happy because I'm like, hey, okay, the, you did a bad rotation, but because the algorithm says you should always try a single rotation first, so I would respect this. But then let just just go from here again. So there's more than one output. Uh, there's more than okay. So if you have the same algorithm, it'll always give you the same solution. But I skipped a step technically because I knew ahead of time that it would have to be a double rotation just because of the way that the tree looked. That's not always the case because it's not always. I mean, whenever you see this, like when you whenever you see like the Pac-Man face, you know we have a tree of this format, right? If you see the Pac-Man, that's a double rotation. If you see the straight line, that's a single rotation. But sometimes with the children and everything, it's not super clear. You always go with the single first. If that fails, then go with the double. Don't just jump straight to the double. Things get weird with that. But again, if it's clear like that, then that's when you do it. So in the test, if in doubt, Stick with single. If not, go straight to double. I will not punish you for skipping that step if you if you see the correct solution ahead of time. Uh, but if you do the if you do the wrong one, leave it in there. Uh, it's good. It's good scratch work. It makes me see that you you know what you're doing as well. So even if you were to screw up somewhere else, you get more points. You know, partial credit and everything. Uh, so yeah. So so potentially you know. Frankly, I'd stick to trying to make it with the least number of rotations to make because because then the TA will it'll be consistent with grading. But as always, if you find any issues with the grading, then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get that fixed. All right, hashing. Let's do the hashing. Uh, by the way, so 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 next week uh, I have to give a machine learning lecture at 2:30 p.m. to the other class. So my office hours I will end them at two. Then gives me the half an hour to take a break then go on to the lecture so it shouldn't affect our class because we should be done by 120 or something so but so then i stay online for the q a part that's what i'll have to cut short if we if we go beyond 2 p.m okay so here we're using for a hash function x mod 10 and so that goes there that goes there um this oh yeah this is separate chaining so technically Let's move this somewhere else. Eleven, forty-one, one. That's a forty, not a ninety. Twenty-two, forty-two, fifty-two, thirty-three, seventeen. Done. Let's do the ABL version of that. Suppose instead of using linked list, use an ABL. This would look the same. The 11, 45, and 41 and 1, however, that would actually look the same too. Yep. I mean, I'm saying what I'm doing in rotations, so that's why I'm saying. 22, 42, and 52, <laughs> no rotations there either. However, oh, you wrote 70 instead of 7 and 0. Oh, ooh, I didn't realize that. Thank you. So in that case, 
Zero goes there. And seven goes there. In this case, then. Zero. And seven. Thank you for that. Do we have to write it that way? Like a tree, or can I just connect it straight up? If the question asks you to do a linked list implementation, you do it like a linked list. If you do it like an AVL implementation, then you do AVL. The question will be, will be specific on that. Um, it's so, so it depends on what the question is asking. If, you're ask, if the question is asking to do separate chaining using a linked list, then that's a linked list. If the question is asking to use separate chaining using an AVL tree, then you do an AVL tree. And I, I'd be prepared for this one too, because then I can ask you two, two birds with one stone on that question, AVL and hashing. Is there a benefit to certain implementation? Of course. So insert time with a linked list is O of one, even if, it, if, even if there's a collision, because you can just insert it at the end of the linked list with a tail pointer or at the head with a head pointer. That's it. However, searching access time can take O of n time if you have everything, if say you're inserting every number starting with, uh, with this with ending with zero, like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, they all, they all collide at spot zero. Then in the linked list, you'd have to search n time to find whether something is there or not. So insert O of one, search n time. AVLs, because it's an AVL tree, even if everything collides in the same spot, if AVL means it's balanced, it means that search takes log n time. That's better than n time with the linked list. However, with inserting, to insert into an AVL, you just don't throw it at the root. You have to actually insert it in the spot that it goes and then balance the tree. Inserting in an AVL tree takes log n time. Therefore, your insert time is going to go down from O of 1 to O of log of n. So the pro of the AVL tree is, in the worst case scenario, your search time is log n. The con of the AVL tree is that your insert time is log n. The pro of the linked list is the insert time is O of 1. The con of the linked list is that the access time, the search time is N O of N. Of course, this is only when there's a collision. So ideally, very rarely is there a collision. And this N here that I'm talking about is N of that of the collided stuff, not N of the entire thing. But it, because if everything collides, it may be the entire thing. So in a, from an application point of view, the best thing to do is to use a hash table with AVLs for separate chaining. And of course, you make a really, really, really great and amazing hash function so that there is very few collisions. But in the case that there are, the ABL will make sure that they stay in log n time. So there you go. Ah, yes. Thank you for that. I was wondering why there was no rotations when I expected one. So yes, this will be like this. At which point you would make a rotation. So then this would become like that. So thank you for catching that. I was wondering because I, I I pretty much remember that I had to do a rotation for the ABL version of this, which you didn't have to do for the worksheet, but when I was thinking about doing it in the worksheet and I was like, nah, I'm not going to put it in, but I had already done it. So yeah. So yeah, but ultimately don't, don't think that the ABL thing is amazing. It's just that again, it's all going to depend on your hash function. You want to make your hash function great. That's where you're going to really make things good. Don't rely on the ABL or the linked list to fix, to, to fix your problems. It's, it's the hash function where you want to spend your time on to make it really good in a real application. Okay, so uh, that's that's uh, chaining, open addressing. We can do uh, linear probing and quadratic probing and double hashing. Let's go ahead and perform linear probing.
linear probing as a refresher is where when you have a collision, you check at the next available spot. If you get to the end of the list, you wrap around to the top and keep going. If you go back to the spot where you started with, you assume it to be bit, uh, full, at which point you either fail out and say, could not insert, list is full, or you rehash by increasing the size of it to the next prime number or double the size, whatever, and then change your hash function accordingly to take advantage of the, of the new size of the hash table. So, however, uh, for our purposes, we're just going to insert and fail if, if it's full. 11 goes there, 20 goes there, 41 has a collision here. So this is what, what I expect you to do in the test. I expect you to put a little error like that to indicate why 41 is going there. Then I just pay you to do the same thing, either this way for one, or you could also do it like this. To indicate why one is going there. I like the second one better for this because for quadratic probing, you can use the other arrows to not make it confusing. Uh, 22. Same thing, collision, collision, so 42, collision, 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 52, thirty-three, and then seventy. Ah, oh, snap. We ran out of space. Hold on a second. And there you go. But yes, you ideally should minimize collision. If we have to do separate chaining, will it specify to do regular linked list or ABL trees? Yes, it will. It will specify if you have to do one or the other, or if you have to do both. Can you just write like H of X plus I where it is I so many spots that have been skipped for linear probing? Uh, you could, but I would still indicate with an arrow where it, saw, where it was supposed to hash to and where it ended up being hashed at. Why do I keep putting 70? I don't, I don't know why. That's just, it, it triggers me. I'm sorry. So zero goes there, or sorry, uh, seven actually. Goes here, one collision, and then the other one goes there. Okay. So yes, thank you for reminding me. I appreciate that. I don't know why I keep thinking it's 70. And I probably, because I keep looking at the same input, my brain just doesn't make that connection. And then the second time, it still didn't make that connection. Quadratic time. All right, so easy ones first. 11 goes there, 20 goes there, 41 goes here because there's just a hop like that. Uh, one is where it starts to get interesting. So. The first collision is of course just one because it's one squared. The second one is two squared. So it needs to go four spots. So that's one. <laughs> that's random. So uh, it goes one, two, three. Ah, oh, the, the, the arrows. She keeps pushing me forward. Uh, so, uh, the one, and then she threw me off. The two here, the three, and the four. So technically the one goes here, yes. And you can indicate that this way, in a clean way. Either that way, or you can just make one arrow to make your life easier. Do you want to leave or what's up? Okay. Twenty-two. 
that's just easy. 42. That one's going to go four spots because of the collisions. So one, two, three, four. So 42 will go here. 52. That's going to not that's going to actually go three squared because the first time we'll try to go here. The second time I try to go there. So the third time is going to try to go nine spots from where you started. So you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, I kind of want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spots. So right there, it's going to try to go in. Of course, there's something there already. So we're going to try four squared, 16 spots. So that is going to be from here. So from two, so that's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So, a lot. We have forty, fifty-two, right? That's when we're putting it. See that wrapping around? You gotta do that wrap around. Uh, do we have to draw these arrows if the linear problem is in the test? Can we just insert? Um, I would like you to draw the arrows, if possible, to avoid any confusion, um, to see the collisions. Instead of arrows, could we write the number of original index and how many jumps it made? You could. In fact, I think I think if Kai was around, that's the way that I made him do it when he took the test. I had to. I had him write down the number of collisions in addition to so. In his version of the test, there was no arrows, nothing. He just had to write the numbers with a hash to, and then the number of collisions. And then that way the TA could look at the number of collisions and see if it was right or wrong. Easy like that. Uh, you could do that, but then I have to modify the test, maybe for the final. For now, yes, indicate if how many jumps you've made. That way you don't have to put the arrows if you really don't want to put the arrows. Just make it clear. I don't just want to see an answer and be like, how, how did 52 get there? Like here, how did 52 get there? Like I, I, need, I need to know that you actually did this. Otherwise, like, like what happens, you know? Big question mark there. Okay, 33, that one's easy. Whew, uh, that would've been nasty. Okay, not gonna mess it up this time, seven. Yeah, okay, zero. All right, zero, we're gonna try. Let's just figure out the indices where it would go. So zero plus one, zero plus, Four, zero plus nine, zero plus 16, and zero plus 25. Let's try them all. So spot one is busy. Spot four, so one, two, three, four. So spot four is busy as well. Spot nine is not busy, so yay. We're done, see? So all of you that said, oh, with quadratic probing, we can't get this thing in here. Fake news. Okay, and so that concludes the worksheet. What is the height of a balanced binary tree search that uses a logarithm? Log n. We just talked about it like four times today. And then the example of the combination, we are, I already showed you multiple ones. My favorite one that I saw from people's submissions was the one that was like an addition and the mod to it. Uh, if you would like to see that, it's on the previous notes. So for this one, we could just write, uh, no, for this one, I would want you to write at least <coughs> that, okay? <coughs> so, yes. All right, additional questions. Before I show you this, so that remember, the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about the questions of the test, each one, like the topic at least. But that's the last thing I'm gonna do and then I'll stop recording for that. At least the recording, recording, the stream will keep going. So before I stop, ask me if there are uh, additional questions that you want to know, that you want to go over. Remember, 12, from 12 to high noon tomorrow to, to midnight, you have three hours. Start it before nine if you wanna have the advantage of the three hours. Otherwise, if you start it at 10, you only get two because it'll cut you off at midnight. So you wanna start it early and also um, check your eyes on Canvas. It will make an announcement at 11.30 with the access code, which I will also post on Discord 
if I am awake. Um, if you have any questions during the test, do not post them on Discord general chats. Send them as a DM to me or the TAs. We will respond to you. If we don't, then do your best. Just, uh, I mean, it's a big, it's a big gap time, 12 hours, which I'm hoping one of us will be online at the time. But if not, then uh, do your best. Remember, there are negative questions. So if you find a question where you just think it's totally wrong, odds are it is. It's a negative question. So then you say it's, it's, it's wrong. It's a negative question. Then give a brief explanation of why you think that is the case. Such as like, explain why merch sort is faster than bubble sort. You should be like, no, what? Literally just that. You know, bubble sort, not merge sort is faster. You know, say merge sort is n log, uh, log n log n, and, and bubble sort is uh, n squared. So like, heck. If you hard code the hash function to get perfect hashing, do you get full credit? Uh, yes. Oh, by the way, we never did double hashing. Um, I just thought about that. If you want to do double hashing for this, you could make your hash function be plus two. So like. You could put in, uh, every time there's a collision, instead of going one spot, you go two spots. It's inefficient because then you might not be able to take advantage of the full list, but you could do that. Or you could make a cube instead of squared. So you could do a lot of things. I didn't do that, but I think you get the idea. Unless you want me to do that, talk to me about it. What kind of conceptual questions should we expect? Like I said, properties of trees. Uh, understanding questions, basically. Like to, if you understand the algorithms. It's specific just about these trees and hashes. Well, about anything that we covered, but I think most of them are conceptual. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a conceptual question on AVLs, conceptual on trees, conceptual on heaps. And I don't even know if there's a, they might be, yeah, I think there's a conceptual on hashes as well. I'm not gonna make the test multiple choice. That's too easy. It's easy to grade. Gaiman made his final multiple choice. Bless Gaiman, though. I, I, I used to, his knowledge to be able to make the test on campus online. You said we needed six characters for question eight. Six characters for question eight? Yeah. The answer for question eight is literally O log N. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Plus maybe a space there. So, or six characters. One, two, three, four, five, six. Eh, seven characters. Oh well. Could you over deleting in the hash table? Yeah, sure. So let's go ahead and delete something. And, well, in the chaining is easy. You just pop it off the link list or delete from an ABL tree. So that one, I don't think I have to go over. I think the one that you really want me to go over is deleting on the, on the probing one. Cause you have the whole idea of, remember, just because a spot is empty, doesn't mean that you can just stop checking. You need to have an additional uh, member variable of your object that is the, the entry of the array that indicates whether that is empty, but by empty as in like, really empty or it was at some point full and then it got deleted if that's the case then you have to keep checking so with uh the way you do that is you you separate you, you create a little column here and then whenever something was at some point used you put a check mark and so suppose that we're going to go ahead and delete um delete 42 okay you look at two, you see there's something, but it's not the right thing. So you check the next spot. Is this linear probing? Yes, yeah, linear probing, okay. Then you, you keep going, you see a 22, you see a 42, you delete it. But you, you leave the check mark there, which means that even though you deleted it, at some point, something was there. That way, if you want to delete 52, you go here, you check, you check, you check, you get to the five, you see that it's empty, but the flag that says that something was there before is set to true. Therefore, you know that there might be a possibility that you may have inserted a 52 afterwards. Therefore, you keep going. And as it is, you find the 52 and you delete it. And then yet again, you leave that marked. Suppose you were just inserting into this table and you were inserting a 52, or sorry, a 42. 
and you insert it there. And then I told you to delete a 52, but you haven't inserted it yet. When you get to the six here, you see that it has never been used before because it's not checked. That's when you can say, okay, there is no 52 here because if there had been, they would have gone there and you don't need to check the rest. That's the only trick you gotta know with deleting on the hash table that you gotta make sure you don't miss on that. You have to keep checking until you hit an empty spot that has never been used. And why is that the case? Think about it, 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 it makes sense. It's com It's like, like they say on the news, it's common sense, which is not, but it makes sense in the sense that, uh, that when you're searching for something and you find an empty spot, because you're searching with the same hash function that you would have when you insert it, it would have gone there. It would, it, that's an empty spot where it would have gone. So the fact that it's not there means that it was never inserted. Whereas something that was inserted before, but now is deleted means that it, at the time that you inserted something, something would have been there, so it would have skipped that spot. So it makes sense in that regards. Could you go over deleting in a hash table? I did that already. Isn't the ceiling function, isn't it the ceiling function of log n? Uh, when you're thinking about the the, uh, the height of a balance tree, yeah, sure. Uh, technically, yes, you could say that is indeed the ceiling function. But then I can counteract and say it's, it's uh, you know, if we're talking about big O, plus or minus one is no big deal. But yes, I would say you put that in there as well. Because, you know, you get something like 2.5, you, you want to say that the highest, at least three. So I would have accepted, I'll, log, I'll just log in. The height doesn't always have to be exactly, uh, like one number, because remember, I can make a tree, a balanced tree, mind you, let's see if this is balanced. So that's a balanced tree according to the algorithm, but you can see there's a big, uh, big height difference going on there. But that's balanced according to the algorithm. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In fact, we could even get rid of one more node here. We can get rid of that node. And we can get rid of this node. Can we get rid of any other notes? Oh, well, that's a typo here. That should be four. So then I suppose we need to make this a three, which means we need to make this a two, which means we make this a one. There we go. Okay. Now we're good. Yep. Okay. So I think that's balanced. Uh, one, two, two, three, four, one, two, one. Yeah. Okay. I think we're good. Uh, it asked for the height. Yeah. So it did ask for a height. So yeah. So yeah. So, so I, so you just needed, maybe that's what, how I got the character count. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Yeah. So that's how you get six characters. So if you put that in like that, so yes. Cool. Okay. So anyways, here we got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 nodes, right? What is the log to 12? Well, we know the log to, I mean, you could technically use a calculator as a test, but you shouldn't have to. Because we know that this is equal to three and we know that this is equal to four. And we know that this number is between eight and 16. So this is gonna be something like three point something. Three point like, I don't know, 3.3. .3. Could be anywhere from 3.1 to 3.9, something like that. 
But because we take the ceiling function of that, it becomes a four. Is that what we got here? One, two, three, four. But what if we started counting from here? And we get one, two, three, four, five. So it's close enough. So anyways, other questions? Again, the last thing I will do is I will uh, I will go over the task, but before that I'd like to, that'll be the last, last thing. So I wanna, I wanna get other conceptual questions first. I'll get that going over here, by the way. I'll pop up in the test in a side monitor that you can't see. In the meantime, pose those questions. And don't forget to follow. I gotta get to 50 followers to become Twitch affiliate. Or like and subscribe if you're on, on YouTube. If we get to a thousand subscribers, then I can do mobile streaming. So I can, I can give you lectures from anywhere, not just from a computer. So like in, in the fall, if you're at, at risk category, I think they're gonna try to see if people at risk can take the classes from home. So then I could actually stream the iPad as I'm teaching. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm gonna go over that, but that's gonna take me like five minutes, so. That's why now is your chance. What about those five properties of trees? Geeks for Geeks. There's an article on that that's posted. They're like the height of a, of a tree or balance tree. Um, like what is the, how many nodes are there in a tree of height? How, up to how many nodes are there on the tree of height? Five. And at least how many nodes? Well, at least you can just make a degenerate list. So that's not interesting. But I, I, I forwarded you to check the Geeks for Geeks for those properties and the lecture because that, that would take too long to go over those. Yeah, thank you for posting the link. Uh, binary tree set, binary dash tree dash set dash two dash properties for those watching the recording on YouTube. I guess you can say you're Gucci on that issue. Okay. I got the test ready to go here. So that's up on you guys. All right, go over the test. Okay. So then I'm going to end the recording for you. I'm still going to stream, so don't, don't leave anywhere. So just for those on YouTube, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the, uh, the recording. And the rest of it will be recorded. It'll just be just on Twitch, but not on the YouTube because I'd rather keep the YouTube because like in the future semester, people can watch these and actually not get confused. So uh, don't, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.